Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. Or do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made? Is all creation groaning? It is. is a new creation coming? It is. And is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. is it good that we remind ourselves of this truly love us he does and does the spirit move among us he does and does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he loves yeah. he does and does our God intend to dwell again with us Good morning from Northern Virginia. It is a beautiful day outside. Today looks a little bit different in that we are not airing our service from the theater today because we've been in a season of fasting and prayer. Today kind of wraps that season up. 
And we're asking people to share what God has been speaking to them. So we didn't think that would go well online. So um, And so we're not showing it. Uh, we're only doing that in person at the theater. But I did want to share a few thoughts with you, uh, thoughts from uh, what we've learned over the last several weeks and, and uh, in, in our time of prayer. Uh, I've been very encouraged by what people have been sharing with me, how God has spoken to them. And I got one email and it just talked about uh, them being part of Centerpoint Church over the last 21 years and how God has really blessed them and encouraged them through people and how people have come around uh, that person during their seasons of life. And they were just really in, encouraged by as as they were thinking back uh, on the history, uh, their history at Centerpoint Church. And it was, it was very encouraging. And they were just like, I'm not giving up now. God has provided so much. I'm not giving up. And so uh, those kinds of words are just really strengthen other people's hearts. And so we'll have an opportunity today for people to publicly say those kinds of things. We've learned a couple of things, had a couple of lessons over the last three weeks, and I just want to share those with you uh, in this format. The first lesson is this. We really do have a great church. Center Point Church is a great church. Uh, they've really taken time to pray and really taken this moment seriously. Uh, and we all realize together that God has a plan for our church. He has not given up. Uh, like I said, he's provided so much for us in the, in the past with so much history with his provision. There's no reason to doubt him now. And, uh, and so we've come together and sought God's face. Hey, we fight our battles from our knees in prayer. We fight our battles with our hands lifted high in worship. And we fight our battles together in unity. And we fight our battles in the word of God. So uh, with all of those things in mind, we've been fighting We've been fighting these battles and just hearing from the Lord. And so I just want to encourage us. We are still a church, a spirit-empowered community of disciples following Jesus and fulfilling his mission. Hey, we're still a church that believes that we are here, that God has a plan for us in Northern Virginia uh, to seek and to save that which was lost, to make disciples, uh, to serve our community and impact our world through missions. That, that's just who we are. And that has not changed. So we have a great church, a great community that just loves one another and really, really loves where we're going. And so the second lesson is this, is that uh, we're not married to a specific property. Um, we're open to wherever God leads us as long as it takes care of the mission that God has called us to. I want to be clear, though, we're not stopping the process uh, that we're in right now. We're still moving forward with that, but we're open to, to God uh, leading us to, to new directions and opening up other properties if possible, and uh, just to see what God has for us. Um, so we're, we're, we are even in that process now of, of, of looking at other places just to see maybe, maybe God has a different plan for us. I tell you what, God has no plan B. Now, getting to plan A sometimes takes going through plan B and plan C and coming back to plan A, uh, just like in your life, uh, our church is experiencing the same thing. He, God has a plan A for us, and we're just following a path to get there. Like I talked about uh, a few weeks ago, sometimes uh, God has detours in our lives, in our church life, but also in your personal life. So we're not married to one specific property as long as we can find a place that accomplishes our mission. Uh, to, we, want to have, we want a place so we can gather together and grow together. We want a place where we can be in fellowship together. We want a place where we can um, have children's ministries and fine arts, those, those kinds of things. And first language congregations, uh, that, that's what we are married to. Well, another lesson that we've learned over the over the time is that people really need community. And I've heard it over and over again how we really are looking for community. And to be let's be honest, uh, we like being in the theater. I like the atmosphere there. I like the fact that it's in the middle of the marketplace. 
right now it just doesn't really lend itself to a community environment. And we do things, we have events and we have life groups, um, but we're looking for a place that could really allow us more space uh, to build community together, to fellowship together. <laughs> we, I remember when we put a cafe in our, in our previous church and how that just slowed us down in Northern Virginia so that we could talk with, with each other. And I know that we miss that. I know we miss things from the past. And uh, part of that is that community atmosphere. And so uh, over the last three weeks, that has been very clear that we do miss that community. Now, I, I, I want to share this with you and challenge you that community is, is something that we have to take responsibility for as well. It's not the church's responsibility to create community for you. We can create environments um, we can create life groups, we can have events, but at some point you have, to, you have to step up and say, you know what, I'm going to build community, I'm going to build relationships, I'm going to join a life group, I'm going to be part of, a, of an event, I'm going to celebrate with our congregation. Hey, tonight's a great time for that. We have water baptisms, we're at Chapel Springs tonight, Chapel Springs Church in Bristol, Virginia, celebrating people being baptized in water, it's a time of worship and celebration, so I want to encourage you to be part of that. Um, next week begins our missions focus. I mean, Sunday morning, we have uh, a global worker. You're going to love to hear Sunday morning. So be there uh, at the theater. Let's celebrate together. And then that Sunday night, next Sunday night, the 28th, we're having our missions banquet. Man, it's the highlight of our year. You should be part of that. Come and join us. We're going to celebrate uh, we're going to be generous. We're going to just really love on our global workers, and we're going to see what God is doing around the world. Uh, so once you to be part of that. Check out our website for information on that. And then um, join us for our prayer times. Join a, a life group in the fall. We have life groups that are starting and a, and a special life group called Rooted. Uh, several of our life groups are going to be called Rooted. And it's just going to go through a time of telling each other stories and growing in Christ together. It, it, hey, Esther and I and several people, several of our leaders went through it in the spring. And it just, it is life changing. It is transformational. So be part of that. Take that step. And uh, as we try and create environments in which community can be built, step into it, lean into it, and join one of those groups so that you could have community, the community that you need to grow in Christ. Well, the last lesson we really learned was that we, we really need to think about the church in the future, what it's going to look like, and structure around it. And that means more participation in leadership, uh, greater teamwork, um, the, the media, all of those things. We need to see church in a new way. Uh, there's going to be types of churches we haven't even thought of yet, and God is going to use us. So there's uh, just four quick lessons that we've learned uh, over the last three weeks. And I know you've learned some lessons too. I'd love to hear some of those. I would love for you to just email us at uh, info at centerpointchurch.com. We'd love to have those and read those. If you have a word of encouragement, if a word from the Lord through Scripture, please let us know. We, we want to hear that. And, uh, and then if you have a prayer for us, if you want to write a prayer, that would be awesome. And so we, we would really be encouraged by that. Uh, here's my ask. My ask is that you look beyond this moment and just see what God has for us. And hear the voice of the Lord for the future. Let's look beyond this. Let's think creatively together about how God wants to use us. Let's pray as if it all depends on God and just do the next right thing. God will help us. A couple of scriptures for you. I just I want you to hear these. Psalm 18, I love this passage. It says, I love you, O Lord. O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I am saved from my enemies. Man, let's do that together. Let's just believe and worship the Lord and understand that He is our rock. He is our strength. He is 
our fortress. He is the one that we depend on. And then finally, finally, two more, two more scriptures uh, that I run to in times like this. And the first one is Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6, probably one of the earliest scriptures that I memorized as a youth, and that is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Uh, trust in the Lord. It's one of the most difficult things that a, a believer does is trust in the Lord. But if you can believe and trust the Lord for salvation and eternity, certainly you can believe and trust God for this moment in your life with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Yes, we are to seek understanding. Yes, we are to go after wisdom. Yes, we are to, uh, to get help from others and listen to others. But we don't trust completely in that. We trust in the Lord. Lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct our paths or make our paths straight. And finally, I love the passage in Psalm 90, 17. It says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us and establish the work of our hands. That's my prayer for Centerpoint Church. It's my prayer for you that, um, that the favor of the Lord will rest upon you and establish the work of your hands. All right, God bless. Thank you for joining us. And I uh, hope to see you next Sunday. And uh, we'll just worship the Lord together. So, one more time, we go through our battles, we fight our battles on our knees in prayer, we fight our battles with our hands lifted in worship, and we fight our battles together in unity, and we fight our battles through the Word of God. God bless you. Have a great day.